Are there any pedestrians that seem to be looking at you with some intent? Do they have their hands in their pockets? Are they walking towards you with a purpose? I mean, are you, are you aware of those kind of things out in public? Generally not. Most people aren't. You need to be because this is a classic setup. All right. The main thing here, travel in the middle lanes because that gives you more, uh, more maneuver room. When you come up to a stoplight, leave enough room. When you stop behind another car, stop far enough behind so that you can see where their rear tires touch the ground. As you're looking over the hood of your car, you see the contact point between the rubber on their rear tires and the pavement. When you have that kind of distance, you can maneuver left or right. If you have something that looks hinky to you, get out of there. You, you know, don't worry about traffic. Don't worry about traffic signals and all that kind of stuff. I mean, don't get into an accident, but don't worry about running a red light. I mean, I was a cop for a number of years. Uh, I like, you know, I, I write tickets as, 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 as uh, efficiently as anybody, but, but you have, if you're taking evasive action, uh, there's a pretty good chance that you're not going to have, you're not going to get a conviction for some stop sign or stoplight violation, particularly if there was no damage and you have your credible witness. Um, so, and I'd rather take I'd rather take the hit even if you even if you don't get out of the ticket, if if you if, if you think there's something hinky going on here, uh, I'd rather take my chances with a with a bench trial for a traffic citation than end up out in the country someplace with a bullet in my head. I always hate it when that don't you hate it when that happens? I hate when that happens. One of the ways you can avoid your risk. Of, uh, reduce your risk. Make sure your car's in good shape, plenty of gas. A lot of stuff in your trunk. A lot of times when people become hostages in a carjacking situation, they get stuffed in the trunk. So anticipating that, let's put some stuff in the trunk. You know, let's have some energy bars, some water, flashlight, hunting knife, uh, maybe some form of communication, handy talkie or something like that, extra batteries. There's a thin line between preparedness and paranoia. And I can't tell you where that is, frankly. I cannot. You have to decide for that yourself. But, but somewhere, somewhere there's, there's some kind of a line. And I would rather err, if I'm going to err, I'd rather err on the side of paranoia. Because, because that means you're at a higher state of preparedness. Typical setup here is where somebody... Uh, fakes an accident. You pull up to an intersection, you're the second or third car back, somebody backs into you and then gets out and when the cops get there they claim that you rear-ended them. Or more to the point, by the way that's an insurance fraud scam, but more to the point, the car bumps you from the back, you get out to investigate. Remember I, I, we talked about if, if, the, if the ATM guy could get a hold of your purse? When most of us, if you get out to investigate, I always leave my purse on the front seat. I don't know about you, but I get out to investigate, I, you know, and your purse is there on the front seat. Some accomplice comes over and grabs your purse. You see how, see how that setup works? Those two events now that seemed unrelated are now connected. And they've got your card and, and your ATM pin. Or what was that? I heard on the news a couple days ago, and I can't remember where it was at. Some guy had his car carjack and has a two-year-old in the back seat. Remember that? It was on the news a couple of days ago. Happens with annoying regularity. Okay, we're about done. Uh, I've got some other slides, but basically, basically I, have, I have presented for you the essentials. Let me just go right through to my, to my summary here. <clears throat> 